Ella Fitzgerald once said, Just don't give up trying to do what you really want to do. Where there is love and inspiration, I don't think you can go wrong. Kinda makes you think. Hello everyone, I am A.L. Exley and I am finally back with a long-awaited video updates. I've been meaning to make this video for a long time, but like everything else this summer, it's gotten procrastinated. I finally did it. Um, a bit late, but better than nothing. Today's date is August 4th, and first things first, the most important bit of news, um, the Runestone Guardians 2, book 2, is not yet out. Aww. I had planned for it to be released a couple days ago on August 1st, and it's just not ready. <laughs> and not ready as in... I haven't even made it to the second draft yet. <laughs> I'm pretty bummed about it. When I first started the book two winters ago, I think, right after book one came out, and I thought the pace was going really well, but I didn't work on it as much as I thought I would have. Sitting at your desk at a computer all day, because I was in that fall 2020, I was taking my college classes online, um, so I was basically sitting at my computer all day. <sighs> it kind of sucked. It was, it was hard to work. Uh, this year, it, things had started off good. In the spring, I was coming along at a steady pace. After classes ended, I thought, now I don't have to sit at my desk all day. Now I can use that time to write. And at first I did. Um, and August, suddenly I, you open your eyes and it's August and it wasn't done. So I'm, I'm bummed about it. I really want to, I really love this story. I want to get it done. I want to share it with you guys. But I also want to give you guys a good product. You know, I'm writing this, I'm editing this, I'm doing all the work. Um, and I know, because I'm not an expert in any, in any of these things, it's not going to be the best ever, but I should make it, I should put in the effort to make it good enough. Unfortunately, I don't have an updated release date. Because right now my schedule is not certain. I haven't been writing at all lately in the past couple months. I hope that when I get back to school and when I get back to a set schedule for my days, I'll find a good time of the day to get back into the habit of writing every day. But I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have. I think my problem was I committed the sin, a grave writing sin, of waiting for inspiration. You know, you don't feel like writing every day, only certain times when you really feel that inspiration hit and, and you're like, damn, I have to write something down right now. And because of the stress of a pandemic and staying at home and just everything being flipped around, you know, it's hard to find that inspiration. So if all you're relying on is inspiration, it can fail you. And you find yourself in a place where you're not writing as much as you should be writing. What you should be doing instead is making writing a habit, something you do every day. And once you get into that habit, it's hard to break habits. Just writing a little bit here and there, or reading a little bit here and there. Then even if you don't have inspiration, you're still writing. You're writing something. And you 
make that a part of your daily routine. I didn't have, I don't have a daily routine for the past couple of months. So, like, I wake up whenever. Sometimes I get dressed if I have to go somewhere. I think that's the thing a lot of people struggled with. A lot of students struggled with going to college online or classes online. Like, you don't have to get up out of bed. You don't have to get dressed. Your body kind of stays in that state of rest. Uh, it's relaxing at first, but then it becomes a habit. And it kind of just pulls you down and you never feel like doing anything. Long story short, I don't have a planned release date right now for book two. And I'm not sure when I will at the rates. I'm currently going. Of course, I will let you guys know right away on my website um, whenever I have a plan figured out. This summer was interesting. I finished off classes, I applied to a bunch of different wildlife things, and I didn't get any of them. I didn't even get the unpaid internships. So I had a lot of spare time on my hands, but because my days didn't have a set schedule, it was really hard to get anything done. I thought I would be doing a lot more of these videos, doing book reviews, uh, movie reviews, just talking about my favorite things, and I couldn't even get myself to do that. Making these videos is a lot more work than you think. I did get to do a couple of cool things this summer. For my birthday, me and my friends went up north to the, the little chimney of Minnesota on a fishing trip. Friends and I all caught fish. We had a fish fry. I didn't burn down the cabin. I actually did create a blog post about it on my website. You can go check that out. There's some cool pictures there. Oh, and I've been meaning to talk about the Yellowstone trip. <laughs> uh, it was kind of a disaster. Not... Maybe I'm over... Being over dramatic. But it, it definitely didn't turn out how we hoped. The weeks leading up to it, I was looking at all these different maps, I was planning out routes, I was planning stops for gas stations and food, because this was a road trip from Minnesota to Wyoming. And I had it all planned out, and I thought, I'm so prepared, this is going to be a breeze, we were on a schedule, because we had to check in to things at certain times, and I thought we were all good. But then, as I'm sure some of you know, on road trips, things happen and if they're bad enough they can ruin your whole, whole trip and that is exactly what happened to us. We left Minnesota and we drove through Sioux Falls, through South Dakota, around Rapid City, into Wyoming. Most of the trip it was going great. We stopped in Buffalo, Wyoming, a little town east of uh, Bighorn National Park. We wake up um, right on time in the morning, we get our stuff, we get all packed up, ready to go, and my car won't start. We're in the middle of Wyoming in the small town in the parking lot of a hotel and our car won't start. I called my AAA and because it was tourist season, there was like only five auto repair shops in the whole place, they were all booked. So AAA had to tow us an hour back east to the next town over, which was Gillette. And between Gillette and Buffalo, there was no other towns. And the tow was a few hundred dollars, and my insurance did not cover it. In Wyoming, five free miles does not get you far. And then the repair, the repair was easy, it was straightforward. That still cost me like $200. 
the car wasn't ready for us until the next day. So we had to spend money on a hotel and stay an extra night in Wyoming, where we should have been to Yellowstone by now, but we had to stay at the hotel and wait until morning to get the car and go. We had already driven over 10 hours. We might as well finish the trip and just at least drive through Yellowstone. And that was all we got to do, basically drive through it. We didn't get to stop anywhere. We got to Yellowstone just as it was starting to get dark, just at sundown. We didn't get to stop at all besides stopping for gas. We did get to see some cool things. Um, even if you're just driving through Yellowstone, odds are you have some cool views. It was disappointing we didn't get to actually walk around any place, and we couldn't make the lower loop, we couldn't make Old Faithful, or any of the other spots I want to stop to take pictures. But we still got to see some stuff. We did pass by a herd of elk. There was a bison, just a bull bison, just on the side of the road. I didn't notice until my friend pointed out, and it was like right in my face as I was driving by. It scared the heck out of me. Um, driving through Bighorn, we did see a moose, just a glimpse of it. Um, I unfortunately couldn't stop because there was already a bunch of people stopped. I had to keep driving. Um, a lot of elk, a lot of bison. Uh, I even saw a pheasant, a ring-necked pheasant in Wyoming. I didn't think they were there, but apparently they are. So just before dark, just before like nine, I think, we made it to our cabin um, in Grand Teton National Park, which is just south of Yellowstone. And it was situated right under the Teton Mountains. <sighs> so we go into our cabin and the email I had received said, to bring your own bedding and pillows and stuff like that because of COVID and everything. Well, I, I thought they meant like blankets and pillows. I didn't think they meant the actual bed. We went in there and there were four bunk bed frames, wooden or plywood frames with nothing on them, no mattress, no padding, just wood. So we spent the night sleeping on tables with nothing but blankets because we didn't even have sleeping bags with us. It was a little nerve wracking being there too because apparently there's a lot of bears. We didn't get to see any bears. I'm kind of thankful for that because that'd be kind of scary. The cabins didn't really have locks on the doors either. We check in and they go over the campground rules, um, keep your food in bear safe containers, there were specific places you threw away food, they had bear spray for rent. And I, that was the moment where I was like, oh shoot, we are not prepared to encounter a bear. <laughs> Please don't let us encounter a bear in the middle of the night. My friend had to go up to use the bathroom. The bathroom was in a building. A little walk from the cabin. Middle of the night, pitch black. All she had was her phone flashlight on. And I remember waking up and watching her go and thinking, well, that's the last I'm going to see of her. She's going to get eaten by a bear for sure. <laughs> but she was fine. She turned out fine. None of us saw any bears um, at the cabin or driving. And we spent the night, and we tried to wake up early, but we had to be in South Dakota before dark. So we didn't have time to go on a walk. We didn't even have time to go to a restaurant for breakfast. All the restaurants nearby were packed for breakfast, too. So my recommendation, when if you guys are planning to go to Yellowstone, really plan as far ahead as you can. Like, plan to bring your own food if you want, because tourist season is crazy. And all, I'm glad we went, 
I'm disappointed in the trip. Um, I do want to go try to go to Yellowstone again. This time we're flying because the stress of driving through the middle of Wyoming in an old vehicle that could break down is really bad. <laughs> you see a lot of cool stuff when you're driving, but either we're flying or we're taking a vehicle that is almost guaranteed not to break down, which, you know, how certain can anyone ever be of something like that? The other things that happened to me this summer were I took up acting. Acting has been something I've always wanted to do, but I've never really gotten the opportunity to try it. You know, there is always acting opportunities in school and school play, but in my high school, my high school in general wasn't really clicky, but they always chose the same popular students to be in the plays. The same drama students. Which is a little sus. I also didn't like the drama teacher. I think she was a little, a little too much for me. I did book a role that's coming up in a couple weeks down in Iowa. Just a weekend of filming. I get paid for it. Not a lot, but hey, it's money. I'm happy about it. And it's not a big production or anything. I think it will be available on YouTube. If it's a kind of movie you guys are interested in, I'll share it. I also have an audition coming up for another independent film project. This one's unpaid, but it's based on Skyrim. I'm pretty excited because they have choreographed fight scenes in there, which is awesome. If you think about it, acting is just another way of telling a story and I'm a storyteller at heart. I have been since I've been a little kid and reenacted my favorite movies and books with my hundreds of stuffed animals and dolls. I look at acting as another medium for arts. Just like painting is one medium, sewing, embroidery is one medium, acting and writing are other mediums. Speaking of art, along with working on the Runestone Guardians, I have a few new projects that I have come up with. My friend and I have started to collaborate on a webcomic based on the Robin Hood folklore. The thing with Robin Hood that really irks my friend is... They never do it right. It's perfect for a short, episodic story. And all these movies like Prince of Thieves and the new one that came out like in 2018, they all try to explore Robin Hood's backstory and character and create another story. But the original folklore stories were basically just a bunch of tropes. The characters were tropes. As writers, we try to avoid tropes. We try to put a new, interesting twist on it. Doing a webcomic is intimidating because I've tried it before and it is a lot of work. But I think now that I'm older and wiser, <laughs> by a little bit, I think now I have a plan of attack to get this done. And I have friends who want to help me do this. We want to work on it together. So I think it could be something. We don't really have a plan for when it's coming out. Right now it's just abstract ideas on paper. I know I'm getting good vibes from it. I think we could really do something with this. I've also had a few new story ideas, but I don't want to start working on them until I finish what I've already started. So yeah, this is the life of a writer, guys. So I just want to make this video to let y'all know where I'm at, what's going on. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of new material, new writing to, to present. I want to take a moment to tell you guys, make sure you 
send appreciation to your favorite artists. Like, if you're following a webcomic, if you're following even a Wattpad story, let them know you appreciate what they're working on. And don't give them a hard time, because a lot of people have managed to work through the pandemic. And no matter who you are, it has affected you in some way. Some people have been affected positively, they have more spare time, and they've been able to deal with it really well. And some people like me are really struggling to get even the smallest things done. So be nice to your local artist. Show your support. You don't have to buy their products. Just like, don't pirate their work, first of all. You don't have to buy it, buy it but don't pirate it. Just send them, hey, I really love your work. You're doing a good job. I look forward to seeing what you have coming up next. Like, that can mean a lot to them. So, long story short, be appreciative of your favorite artist. Don't take their work for granted. And a shout out, a personal shout out for me to all the artists out there, all the writers, digital designers, webcomic creators, all you guys, small time, working at home, working alone, if you have a small team of friends, keep going. It will pay off eventually. There are people out there who love your work, who want to see more of it. But remember, at the end of the day, you should be doing your work because it makes you happy. No matter what anyone else says, personally, that's what drives my work. It makes me happy. I want to do these things. Even though I procrastinate like crazy. I want to write, I want to act, I want to draw. Hold on to that and you know, you're never gonna lose it. And that's all I have for you guys right now. I will be sure to update on my website, on Twitter, any new stuff that is coming out. I'm not working very efficiently right now, <laughs> but there will be things in the future. Here are my social media handles. You follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, and get email notifications from my website of any new posts or announcements that are coming up. Yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you guys in the next uh, video update.